Hi, Stampers. This is Lisa with Queen Bee Creations. I'm here today with our live. I apologize. I sound a little scratchy and might cough during this whole thing. I've had COVID for the last week. Last Sunday was my birthday, and then Monday I wasn't feeling so good, and Wednesday I went and got tested, and I said, absolutely, you've got COVID. And it just feels like a really bad cold. I'm coughing. My head's congested. I would have said it was a regular cold, but I do hold some in-house classes. I've got a really small group of ladies. We're all vaccinated and we have classes in person and I wanted to make sure I wasn't exposing anybody. And sure enough, so <laughs> if you happen to come down with a cold, you might want to consider that it might be a little more than a cold. But I still wanted to come on here and show you guys how to work with a set of dyes that came out in our January to June catalog. Um, it's the tulip dyes. It's part of the whole suite. And I'm going to show you guys the suite. And then we're going to play around with those tulip dyes. Um, they are also part of my customer appreciation PDF for this month. So if you place an order of $30 or more, then you get a PDF of six tutorials. And they're going to show you um, some cards you can make with these dyes that are part of this suite. So happy Valentine's Day to everybody. Yes, thank you for reminding me, Carrie. Like I said, a little bit of COVID brain going on. So, um, but we're going to plow forward and make the most, most of it. Um, make sure that you type in hashtag prize patrol if you're here in the United States and you want to be entered into the drawing. I will have a prize going out. It'll probably be a little bit late because I want to wait till COVID's over. I'm going to spray everything with whatever you spray the Lysol or I don't know, whatever the spray is that gets rid of all the germs. <laughs> Cause I, like I said, my biggest concern is I don't want to spread this to anybody. And so that's the beauty of us being online is I get to be able to teach you guys without exposing you to any of my germs. So I have two cards on my desk that are just kind of a sample of some of what we're going to do. Here is one of the cards. So we're going to play with these dies up here. And this is another card done with the same dies, just a different designer. This was designer series paper, and these ones are cardstock. Like I said, we're going to play with both. The entire suite is called the Flowering Fields Suite. And I've talked about suites before, and what that means, it's going to come with usually one bundle. This is a mega suite, so it has two bundles. <coughs> Excuse me. It's got the flowering tulips and then the tulip fields. Then it's got this beautiful gingham ribbon. It's evening evergreen color, and then it's got this window pane design. It's really pretty. And then they came out with some teeny tiny butterflies. There they are. Okay, so here's our dies that we're playing with today. This is the tulip dies. And it goes with the flowering tulips stamp set. It is photopolymer. And then we have the tulip fields, which is again photopolymer and then has these dies that go with it. Hi, Nancy. Thanks for joining us. I see so many of our friends online today. That's so nice. I appreciate you being here and checking us out. It also came with these brushed, what did they call it? Brushed brass butterflies. And they mine kind of came apart in shipment, so they're kind of stuck to each other, a little bit goofy. But they are really cool because they're a brushed brass. I don't know if you can make that out. And they're really teeny, but they do give a great look as just a little accent in lieu of maybe pearls or rhinestones. And they're nice and flat, and so they're not going to mess up the machine if you put them through the mail. So I do like that about them. And then, of course, there's the designer series paper which is gorgeous. And you don't really get the full grasp of what it looks like in the catalog. So I thought I'd show you guys. So 
So it's got kind of a brushed, you know, palette paint look on the back and then the tulips on the other side. And it's got some clouds. So isn't that pretty? Such pretty designer series paper. I love it. And of course, as always, if you flip it over on the back, it's going to tell you what colors are used in there. So they've got Calypso Coral, Evening Evergreen, Fresh Freesia, Highland Heather, Mango Melody, Pear Pizzazz, Petal Pink, Pool Party, Poppy Parade, Pumpkin Pie, Rich Razzleberry, Soft Succulent, and So Saffron. So there's lots of colors that you can pull out of your stash to work with. So I pulled out some for today's card, and I'm going to show you a couple different ways I worked with the dies. The dies are a little bit funny in that they, I don't know, they're kind of odd shape. And so they do a score line as well as die cut. What do I do with my sponge? <coughs> there it is. I knew I had a sponge out here. So what I'm going to do first, I'm going to show you just plain cardstock. Um, I pulled out, this is actually real red. According to the back of that, I should have Poppy Parade, but we're going to go with it. So I've die cut all the various pieces. And so then you end up with this pile and you're like, okay, <laughs> now what? So I'm going to show you now what. So you're going to take the pieces that have the score lines to them and you're going to set them off to the side. And these you're just going to fold on that score line and then you'll see how it starts to become a tulip. Oops, because I'm not exactly on that score line, huh? There we go. Okay. okay, now this is the smallest one, and so this isn't going to have the forked one in it, but it is going to have another small one that'll pop out of the middle. So that's only going to have the one. But these others are going to have this V shape in it, as well as the single one. So I'm going to lay that out here so you can see. And then that one's going to go there. So this one's going to have that shape in it and then that shape in it, and then it's all going to glue together. Now you can do it just straight like this. I mean, it's a beautiful little tulip. Or what you can do is you can set the die back down on top of it. <clears throat> Excuse me. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring in the same color ink and a sponge and I'm going to sponge directly into the die. Now I'm going to need to wash the dies after I'm done. It does make them kind of inky. But what it does is it gives a little more definition, I guess I want to say, to the petals. So I would go through and do that with the various dies. And, you know, we normally we kind of swirl when we're sponging, but you don't want to do that with these because it might rip apart your sponge dauber or your sponge. So you basically want to just dab straight up and down so that you don't snag the sponge on the metal and rip it. Oh, 
So there's another one. And then this one. Does anybody have any exciting plans for Valentine's Day? My husband had to work, just like on my birthday, so they both were kind of a flop. But I'm sick anyway, so it doesn't matter. But might be fun to see if some of you guys are doing something fun. I can live vicariously. We did not watch the game yesterday. Um, luckily, my husband's not really into sports like that. He'll watch the Little League World Series. That's the only, like, sports I've really seen him get excited about and turn on to our television set. Other than that, we get to skip sports altogether, which is kind of nice. My dad watched every sport there was on TV, everything. I mean, bowling, golf, pool, you name it. If it was a sport on TV, he watched it. So I had my fill. That one shifted a little bit on me. I'm trying to go quickly, but you get the idea. So then these will need to be washed. Like I said, they're kind of messy now. And so are my hands. Then another thing to give them a little bit of dimension is you might want to take and curl them a little bit with the bone folder. Now don't pull too hard. We don't want to rip the paper at all, but... This will give them a little bit of dimension, so they look like they pop up a little bit. And then you can stick them together flat. That is an option. But what I chose to do was stick a mini dimensional in there to, again, give it a little more depth. So. I was trying to keep these together so you guys could see. But um, you can also take this and you can kind of drag on the edge just to give the edge a little more definition. Especially since I'm going to set it in this one, I want there to be, you know, a, a definition between the two. So I'm going to go ahead and bring out my glue. And I'm going to use liquid glue to just pull this together. Give it a second to dry. And then, I'm, like I said, I'm going to pull in mini dimensionals. Well, I'm going to stick that right here. Oops. Guess I should glue it in. Huh? And so there's our little bud. You're going to come in with the second one. And I'll put the dimensional back there. And so we're just kind of layering them together. Now you could stick this, you know, it could have been back there. It can be out here. It doesn't really matter, I don't think. <coughs> Excuse me. Just however you think it looks best.
So these dies require a little bit of assembly. They're kind of like the prized peony that we have. And it's really pretty once it's all put together. But when you first get the dies, you're a little bit lost as to how they go together. Thank you, Wendy. Okay, then I have one more. Again, let's... this one in here now like I said you know I had them laid out with the order in which they go together that is in my PDF so if you place a $30 order you will get perfect directions on how they all go together as well as instructions to make six different cards using this bundle So I really like them once they're together. And then, of course, you know, because they're dyes, they have the stems. And there's a thick stem, which would be if you were to stamp it and then cut it out. There's a thicker one. And then there's the thin one if we're just going to glue it on. Because, you know, as with most of our dyes, there is the dyes that will cut out images after they're st stamped. So, you know, that one would go there, and then there's this one. So they're just a teeny bit smaller on here, I guess, so that they'll all fit. But the idea is that you could stamp them and cut them out as well. This one actually just cuts a bunch of holes into your paper. It doesn't cut the edge. It just cuts a series of holes out. And then this I really liked. This came out really pretty. I cut that out so I could show you. There we go. So I used our marvelous, marvelous <laughs> um, designer series paper. This is one of the packs that's a freebie um, during celebration. And I really liked the, the look it gave the flowers. It gave them a variegated coloring without my having to like stamp anything. But for this one, I went ahead and I just cut some of the designer series paper. Now I could put that either on the polka dots or I can put the clouds. But then I was gonna go with this one over the top and then we'll assemble our tulips on here. So this is our standard card base. This is eight and a half by five and a half, scored at four and a quarter. Then this is four inches by five and a quarter, just a layer to go on top. And then I use the Stitch So Sweetly dies to get this rectangle with the scalloped edge to it. So that's right here. So you don't need very much glue. And I'm going to make two different cards here. So I'm trying to save my pieces here. Ooh, yikes. Oh, look what I did there. Okay, so I'll have to redo that. <laughs> but you're getting the idea that then you would place your tulips down on top and then some leaves down at the bottom. Let me see if I can get my hands cleaned up here. Probably should have done the sponging card last, right? 
Okay, so anyway, so that would be one. As we could put this together, you know, if I had another stem here, we could do this. I even kind of like it in an angle. That was kind of cool, huh? But you would piece it together and then you would have a card. So that's just with standard card stock. I have another option here where I have put them together using different colors of cardstock. So that would give us this kind of look. So it's kind of a variegated coloring. Oh, yikes, it's red. Should have done the red last. Okay. So it gives the variegated coloring, but it's done with just different colored cardstock instead of inking it up. So less messy, same kind of idea. And these are the tulips you would end up with. Okay, so I don't know if you want to screenshot that or if you're going to place your order and get my template with that, but that's how they go together for that one. And then the next card I'm doing with Highland Heather card base. Again, eight and a half by five and a half, scored at four and a quarter. Yeah, rubber gloves might have been a good idea, huh? Although I would have needed to take them off before I put my card together. Okay, so this piece is four inches by five and a quarter. And I don't know if you can tell, but I ran it through the embossing machine with our new gingham embossing folder. So this is what we call dry embossing, is I just sandwiched this into our embossing folder. And it came out with this really pretty gingham design on it. And then I went ahead and I used the Marvelous, Simply Marvelous Designer Series paper again. And I cut out a series of them. And you can use either side. The Simply Marvelous designer series paper has this kind of satinish look on one side and then a marbleized look on the other side. Both of them really pretty. Both work well for the tulips. There's the other one. But again, we're just going to fold them on the score lines. And we're going to tuck this inside and then glue it together. And you can choose to lift it up if you'd like, or you can leave them flat. Like I said, I kind of like the look of them being a little bit puffed up, kind of three-dimensional. The glue dries really fast. You just kind of have to give it like a couple seconds to set up. So like I said, these dies are just something that I think are really pretty, but not Intu self intuitive, you know, they don't come with directions and you kind of have to figure out how it goes together. But luckily for you guys, that's why you have me. Because as your demonstrator, it's my job to show you 
and to demonstrate how it all works. I'm liking the way these look going together. And one more. I know this part's kind of tedious and boring to watch, but we're almost to the part where we get to assemble our card. So hang in there. So there we have our three. And I've got some stems over here. Because there's three, I'm going to cut this one and have them pop out the side. Although I want them to be on the back. I did this um, to one of them, and I had the connection part on the front, and I didn't like it as well. So this time I'm going to put the connection on the back. Because that's going to look more natural. And they are very skinny, so I'm just kind of holding them in place. And if it goes over the side, that's going to be an easy fix. I don't know if you can see. But there's just a little teeny bit that hangs over on either side. But I can come in with my snips and just take that right off. And again, just a little bit of glue, because we don't want it to ooze out the side. And I'm going to put it a little bit to this side, because I want to come in there and put the ribbon on that side. Which I had. I know I have it out here because I showed it to you. There we go. This is the window pane check ribbon. And I just need a piece that's going to be a little bit longer. And I'm going to tie it together in a knot. Kind of a messy knot, but we're getting it. And, and putting a knot into our ribbon is what we call a faux bow. It's for people who are not really good with tying um, bows. It gives you kind of that look without as much effort. Although I do prefer to use the bow maker tool. And then we're going to just adhere it on the back. And of course, I should have given it a little more length. Like I said, COVID brain and all. But you get the idea that that's going to go on that side. And then these are ready to just glue down on here. Oh. 
<laughs> yeah, the bow maker tool is quite handy. I'm so excited my husband makes those. Okay, and then we've got, you know, some leaves. We just determine how we want those to go on there. Anyway, you get the idea. We would just play around with that and lay those down. I'm just going to get them adhered. If you want to play with it a little bit more and make them a little more precise, that would be great. I don't have it in me today. I apologize. Okay, then we're ready to adhere it to our card base. So what do you think? Aren't those tulips pretty in that paper? So remember the celebration catalog is only good through the end of February. So we have two more weeks where you can get this simply marvelous designer series paper unless it sells out before then, but we're hoping it's gonna last the whole time. And then you can stamp the inside. You just take another piece of paper and this is what it looks like with the tulip stamped. So what do you think? Is that something you're going to give a try? These were little brushed brass butterflies. Just give it a little something extra. And like I said, they're nice and flat. So that's all I had for today. Like I said, I'm keeping it kind of simple because I'm not feeling really well. But um, I didn't want you guys to miss out on one of our free online classes. So let me switch over here and share which I should have done on a different screen, but here we go. Mm, where did it go? Jeez, not this one. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm probably making a mess. I'm trying to pull up our drawing. Everybody's in her, um, Hashtag prize patrol, right? You're all entered in that. I'm going to go ahead and spin the wheel. Where is it? There we go. Okay. So Rita is our winner today. So congratulations to Rita. You're going to want to go to my Google form and fill out the prize patrol form. It's at queenbeecreationsnet slash prize patrol. And what that is, is in case you're not one of my customers and I need your mailing address, um, you're going to fill it in there. So Again, thank you for joining me, and I will see you back here next Monday at 2.30 and hopefully not be um, still plagued with COVID. So thanks a lot. I'll see you next week. Bye.